Welcome to the Militia Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Trigger Militia, and my guest for you today is No Fate. He's a content creator out of the UK. He does Call of Duty content on YouTube, and he streams on Twitch and YouTube. And we had a great talk. We talked about his content. We talked about my content. We talked about YouTube and how the algorithm affects uh, how your channel is getting seen. Uh, it was a really good time. He's a super genuine guy, and his content is straightforward and to the point. I really, really appreciated him coming on the podcast. So without further ado, no fate. Let's go. My my first real question for you is, because I think that we need to kind of establish who you are and what you do. Um, obviously, sure. you create content on YouTube, you stream, but what is, where'd you come up with uh, the name No Fate and, and how... How does it relate to your content? Um, I don't know if it directly relates to the content. I mean, it's probably a bit long-winded. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a creative by trade. So I'm going to try and keep this spiel short because I'm very <laughs> good at making a long story out of things. Oh, we got um, time. <laughs> ah, good. So uh, the name No Fate is I wanted something uh, like quite a profound name. And finding gamer tags has always been difficult for me, always. And this is kind of the similar thing, like what do you call your YouTube channel? Right. Right. And I like I like quite profound short names, like Shroud, for example. Right. It's short, it's profound, you kind of it's like mysterious. Um, and at the time, I was reading a book on like Greek mythology by Stephen Fry. I don't know if you guys know him, he's like a <clears throat> well known UK uh like tv talent Got it. and basically uh and it was in the movie as well they mentioned the line it was like are we like it's something about the fates as these mythological kind of things that know everything seeing things coming right okay. and kind of in the same kind of <clears throat> mentality as like the shroud thing i was like oh that's quite sick actually that i can actually like predict the actions of others before that and that was right. kind of like how i saw my gameplay is like i like to i always like to kind of out um outplay people mentally right. you know yeah, yeah yeah rather than just being like i don't think my aim is the best in the world i don't think that my positioning is best in the world but i think my <laughs> ability to kind of adapt in situations so that word of fate it just kind of was perfect yeah and then that thing of kind of knowing your fate was the, was the thing and got i it. went through like a whole stack of names man literally <laughs> like three days i got this notes on my phone and i would just go back to it and you know i would stress myself out so much about what my name should be <laughs> and then a friend of mine was just like, "What? what give me, give me the top three. And he was, a, he's a creative as well, so okay. he's very good at this kind of stuff. So he said, "Just give me your top three. And as soon as I said my top three, he said, "Fate, the fate one, that's it, done. It's cool, super cool. Yep. And it kind of opens up to like some very good imagery and design. That's why I got the, obviously <clears> like the all seeing eye kind of logo yep. Yep. Like on the on the merch and stuff I like, like it. that. Yep, I like yeah. it. Yeah. So that's like that it. that's that was kind of the the thing, and there was a there was a YouTuber back in the day. He still does stuff, but he was um, Blame Truth, and it's kind okay. of like a similar vibe name. So as mm -hmm. soon as I come up with No Fate, I was like, oh yeah, that's quite cool. It's kind of like Blame Truth. It's got that kind of vibe to it. Yeah, no, I like it. So, I, I just wasn't sure. Like I, it um, I thought maybe you see like certain like religious tones, not to this one, but like to other people's names, and I thought maybe like the the play on words for No. Where it's like you, you, you know fate, but you don't yeah. know fate. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I, That's I like why it. I li Thank you. That's why I liked it because it's kind of it was it was different and yeah. it just didn't. Yeah, it wasn't just a textbook kind of like. Yep. Yeah, gamer tag name. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's awesome, man. I like. Um, I was watching a few of uh a few of your your Call of Duty videos, just like your create your curated content, and then I kind of popped into a couple of streams. I'll be honest, I don't really watch streams that much. Um, I sure. spend most of my time creating content and then working. <laughs> I sure. work a re regular I nine to five. You. Yeah, gotta gotta I pay the you. bills, you know. Yeah, man. Um, but anyway. Uh, I watched a couple of your videos, and what I noticed about you is that you're really short and to the point. And I think I, I was curious if that's like, is that a is that a specific strategy that you consciously made the decision to be short and to the point? Like, is that that's something you you decided to do? I I guess so, yeah. And this is probably opens up to like a billion other bigger questions. But just for me personally, I'm the type of guy, and I've always been like this through my work as a like a designer, as a creative, and I just don't like to mess people around. Yeah. I, I cannot stand it when I'm being like oversold to or like yep. there's too much 
there's just too much crap in the middle, you know? I yep. just want the the meat and the potatoes, right? Yep. So that's always my, I would never kind of like, I've made a couple of videos, right, where it's kind of like clickbaity, you know, sure. where it's kind of like, oh, I've kind of dressed it up to be a bit more than it is. And as soon as I've, as, as I've made it, I've regretted it instantly. I'm like, yeah. this isn't me. It doesn't make me feel good. I know I'm kind of like tricking people. And I took it down, you know, instantly straight away. I took it down. Yeah, and that's amazing. I think it just, I think, I think it's part of the, when you're, especially when you're starting to build a channel, people, people know, right? Especially these days, people like YouTube is such a, such a big part of people's lives. People watch videos. I don't have the stats, but you know, people watch these videos all day, every day. You can kind of see through a video and a creator that's like out there just to make you, you know, click and buy stuff, right? Yep. I think a lot of people don't like that like that so it's part of my intention to just be like well, okay what is the kind of you know what can i give you as a viewer i want to give you something you know and it really does hurt my feelings when i get comments when people go oh like you talked about this thing for like two minutes and you didn't get straight to the point if yeah. i do that it's probably because i'm giving you context as to yep. what i'm about to say yep. you know um but that is the that is the whole idea really and a lot of my videos i don't know if like how many you've watched or especially the like the gun build videos yep there's so many kids out there just going like oh i had a really good game with this gun and therefore i'm going to show you what this loadout is right but there's a billion other factors in the game that could make you get that great game yep you know there's too many other factors but the fact is that's why i do a lot of my own like testing for the weapons and try and give you pieces of information that go beyond just like oh i had a good game here's here's a loadout you know yeah, because, yeah i i sort yeah, sorry, of oh go ahead sorry I, I i sort of um i sort of recognized early when i was making content that i was looking at things that i didn't like when i was watching content and i wanted to make something that i would actually watch and appreciate sure and so much like you i recognized early that people don't want to be messed around at all they don't want to waste their time with a video for four minutes before the person gets into what they're actually trying to yeah. say. And a lot of times I was watching videos that the actual meat and potatoes could have been maybe a minute worth of content, right? And the rest of it is mm -hmm. just all filler and opinion. And so I I like the fact that you made that decision because it, it's it, it's very true to a consumer or a, a yeah a content consumer centric channel you're making this stuff mm. for the people that are going to be watching it and consuming it you're not making it for yourself and you're not making it for clicks or views or i mean obviously that's the goal right yep. but that's the goal with meat and potato content and that's, exactly. that's something i really appreciated about it like like before dave introduced us i didn't really have any like any context of who you were we were just kind of like like thrown together a little bit and so i, I sure. started going back and and watching the content i really appreciated that because it's something that i i personally try very hard to do and just like you man when you said earlier just just now when you said that it hurts your feelings when you get a comment that's like oh you spent too much time doing this man when i get that comment i'm like oh i'm so sorry like i'm not yeah. trying to waste your time at all you know and um, anyway, I just I really did appreciate that. I think you recognize. Oh, thank you, something. man. No, yeah. honestly, that mean that means a lot. But yeah, the, like those kind of comments is I actually try to like you know I go back to the guy and say okay, like what like what part did you feel that I I did? Yeah. Because I've got one like my best video, which like I just checked it today, is like over three hundred thousand views, and that's yeah. like massive for like massive. a channel my size. Yeah, massive. It's huge. And it was one of those typically, as always, you don't really expect it to get that much attention. Mm -hmm. And it was really just like I woke up in the morning and I kind of saw on like vidIQ that a lot of people were searching on like how to unlock this gun. And I was like, I haven't done it yet. So I'll go ahead and I'll just, again, to give some information, I will just, every match that I get into, I'll write down my findings. Like, you know, I, I tried this, I tried that. And that was more of the point. The video was is like, okay, well, I've only got 10 matches because this gun, you can only you have to do this thing in ten matches. So, but we've only got ten matches to try and find this core piece of information to help these people out. Yeah. So that the whole video was me saying, "Well, out of these ten matches, these are all my findings." And this guy was like, "Well, you spent like ten minutes bitching about like every match that you've been into." I was like, "Well, not really. I've kind of given you context, so you guys don't have to go through the same problem that I did." Right. 
But of course, there is a punt. The punchline is at the end of the video. You're like this is the thing that you can do to to solve it. But again, yep. for me, that was context. If yep. I just said to you, "I'll oh, do this, and you unlock the gun," that's not. I, yes, that would probably be very helpful for you, but it's not really teaching you like how or why to do it. Right. And also, for me, it's not good. There is that line of balance, you know. For yep. me, I have to think about it as like, okay, well, I do want to grow my channel. I do want to make entertaining but informative content. Yep. So there's always a balance of of those elements. Yeah, I think right? that's I think that's really important for people who are just starting out. And part of part of the reason I wanted to do this podcast and talk to other creators is to sort of give information to um, people who are just starting out. I get tons of messages on Instagram and YouTube about you know what are my best tips for someone trying to make it on YouTube, which is really funny sure. because I don't even feel like I've made it on YouTube. Like I'm not it's not supporting me like i can't pay my bills with youtube the youtube is sure. is a is a side project that i hope one day will blossom into something like mm -hmm. that but i think people see the subscribers and the, and the followers on instagram and things like that and they just think that you know i've made it right which is understandable but anyway i get a lot of messages um with regards to like how to start and and, and what what type of strategy or what tips and tricks i have for people and i Sure. Uh, the real answer is there's no tricks. There's only tips. And what you just said makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, and hard work, man. It's, it's, it's hard. It's graft. It's hard work. It's a lot you know, of work. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work. You have to develop a lot of skills that you just never had. Like, did you, did you start out like knowing how to adjust like your audio and like how to film and how to stream and like how wh where did you start when you started making content? Where did you start? Like as far as so technically. Technically, okay, this is this is potentially quite a good story because I have uh, an old channel. That's really where I learned all of the things that I've applied to this to, to my No Fate channel, right? Okay. And that was called uh, the S the the SFF, the Silver okay. Fox Foxy. The SFF is the name, so you can type it into YouTube and go and go and see that. And that was when I was like, I don't know, that must have been about ten years ago, eleven years ago. So I was I was young, very young. YouTube was in a completely different place than it is now. Yep. There's no Obviously, everyone has a wealth of experience on how the YouTube algorithms work now, even though they change quite often. But, you know, there's lots of help and support. Back right. then, I had nothing. But um, for work, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to work within video. So I was doing a lot of, um, I was using gaming videos to teach myself how to edit. So I use After Effects to do motion graphics. That was my main yeah. kind of like vision. I wanted to do a lot of motion graphics stuff. So a buddy of mine, and I started up this channel and we did everything. We did Let's Plays, we done Call of Duty, we done like quick scoping videos, got a very, very good example of what I'm talking about is I done a, a series called Foxy Shots. Okay. So if you type that at the SFF Foxy Shots, you'll see there's a playlist of like 10 videos and that is like the, it's a quick scoping, like Modern Warfare 2 is quick, quick scoping montage series, right? Okay. But that's really where I applied everything that I was learning. It was like building title graphics and doing entertaining like gameplay yep. and like transitions and like everything. Outside of that, all the other videos were horrific. <laughs> I was doing some when I was super depressed and I was just talking to people. You can even hear my voice. Right. So I've been through a lot of bad videos to get to where I am now, you know? Yep. Yep. So that's the thing. Another comments I get on this channel is like, "Oh my god! Like you look like uh, a you know a 50k channel, like subscriber yeah. channel." Yep. That's because I've had a, an atrocious time about eight <laughs> years ago learning all this stuff. Right. So that obviously this channel just looks super polished, right? You know, right? Um, but yeah, so that was kind of like my background was I wanted to get into video, so I okay. used YouTube as like a a medium to learn and to teach myself all that stuff. And yeah. again, that kind of told me what kind of creator that I wanted to be. I knew that it wasn't like I was I wanted to help people, but I knew I just wanted to to play. That was the thing. I wanted to show people my skills. I wanted to do like very fast high action gameplay. Yeah. But that was the things that's they're the things that I wanted to when I sure. went on the YouTube. They're the things I resonated with, right? Yeah. But then you might ask me then well how comes now you're just making this very informative like helpful content and that's because i'm just reading the community right the community right. i can see the community that's what that's what will work yep and if i was to give a tip for anybody who's starting a channel now it is that it is 
kind of read what the community is looking for, what would be a very strong series of videos to start off with. Yeah. Don't bite off something too big. Take off something that you can, like a format that you can rinse and repeat quite easily, quite right. quickly, and that you know will be effective. And yep. uh, platform things like vidIQ, which is like a plugin that you have in Google, that, that has helped massively. If I had that back in the day with my other channel, <laughs> right. man, I would have destroyed, absolutely destroyed, because back then, you had no idea what people were searching for. There was right. nothing to help you. It was kind of like, you're just fishing. You're making content. Does it stick? No. Okay, I'm going to make something else. Mm -hmm. And that was that was that was kind of kind of it really. So now it's kind of like I always I always say like this part of the YouTube journey is like being in a band. Like when you start a band, like no one wants to hear your like abstract <laughs> shit, right? Your right. like off the wall jazz like <laughs> right. numbers that nobody knows. They want to hear like stuff that they know and they can sing along to. Yep. So that's kind of what it's like. So just play to the play to the audience, like give them yep. what they want even though it might not be the thing that you think, okay, if I was at a million subscribers, this is what the, the content that I would be making. Yeah. Sometimes you have to suck it up for a bit and just say, okay, but do it in your own way. Like, I, like I'm trying to give it my own spin. It yeah. feels honest to me. I feel like I'm actually giving people something. And yeah. I find I, I love doing it. But, you know, when you're, when you're you know, you, when you've been jamming and playing all of, like loads of gigs around the world, you know, then you can start to branch out and play your own songs, you know, yep. make your own kind of content because you've got the fan base that will watch those videos. Yep. If you did it now and I was like, okay, I'm going to do some really abstract kind of like, you know, war zone video that no one's searching for. Right. Guess what? No one's going to watch it. Nope. It might be very, <laughs> it might be the best video in the world. It might but be great. No one's going to watch it. Yep. But when you start to build up a fan base and you, okay, you've got 10K subscribers or something, then you know, okay, well, even if I make a video about me cooking dinner, Maybe you know five hundred people will probably watch it because I have the fan base that's actively interested in my content. Yep. So I think that's a very good. Uh, I love that. I love that analogy about the band analogy is perfect. It's absolutely perfect because if you follow a band like you love a specific band, you follow them from when they were very very like small all the way through mm. their rise and then the tail end of their career where maybe they've grown up, they think a little differently. And they start making the music that they really wanted to make right here when they started. They start making yeah. that way at the end of the career. Exactly. So it's very, it's very interesting. I, I love that analogy because it makes so much <laughs> sense to me. And Thanks. I, I feel like, I feel like that's exactly what you and I have both done because, you know, the content that I'm making now is very informational. It's very helpful. But I, but I would love to just make a series of like, like for, for me, I make Need for Speed content, but I would love to make a series of like Apex videos. And I would love to make a series of like, I've been playing um, uh, Grounded lately. I would love to make Grounded videos, but like mm. my, my audience isn't going to watch that at all. Exactly. So yeah. I have to sort of build it up to this and I want, I, I want to get people to like me and the type of content that I make, like the style of content that I make so that I can bring them with me into whatever it is the next thing that I really, really like making content for. Exactly. And I yeah. know a whole bunch of them are going to stop watching content when I switch games, if I ever do. If I ever just go away from Need for Speed and go to something else, I know a whole bunch of them are not going to follow. Sure. But I'm going to have a solid base of some people that will kind of come with me. I hope. I really hope. But Yeah, of course. Because I think it kind of splits into two categories. You've got people that are like very, they're, they're very much into you. Yeah. as a as a person as a character yeah right so it doesn't matter where you go or what you do they obviously come with you to watch you it doesn't matter what you're doing they'll just they just love to see you and then there's other people who obviously just like your content the things that you make so as i say there's always going to be a uh, a divide yep. and i don't think you'll ever kind of make a hundred percent package of uh, everyone that you can bring over bring right. over to you it's hard you know it's but it's hard. yeah it does i think that's probably one of the only things on youtube like that makes sense the fact of like if you stream or do sorry if you upload different games then obviously you kind of split the market right and you're not going to get a big fan base because people don't know what you're going to post next right and you're going to lose interest yep but other yep. things such as like streaming on youtube that breaks your algorithm um no idea and that really confuses me do you feel like That's it does I've, do you feel like I, i've had i've had multiple discussions with many other youtubers and they all say completely different things so dave for example who streams all the time mm -hmm. he says to me he says to me it's absolutely fine just unlist your videos 
so they're not VOD. So you know, okay. just after you after you stream, just unlist them, and it doesn't break the al algorithm. Okay. Another guy that I play a lot with, another very good YouTuber, a similar level as me, called Exceptional. He says that every time he streams, the following videos that he's, um, he makes absolutely tank. Like they go down straight away. So he's noticed a, like a massive difference. So that's mm. why he's given up streaming on YouTube. Okay. So that's why I'm literally today was the first time that I've officially moved over to Twitch because okay. I'm just, I done a kind of like a, a test week. And I think this is another good point of like, if you're like this small, it's still a very good time to experiment. Sure. So that's why I done like, a, I done a week of no uploads and I just streamed every day just to kind of see how it did. And that's when I kind of first noticed that the, the, the following videos were, they sucked. Like they're yeah. really bad. Yeah. Like really, really bad. So there's part of me that thinks that it, it is true, but there's nothing I can go and check to say, Oh yeah, because I streamed, this is bad, you know? So it's kind yeah. of like witch witchcraft. You don't really know if it's real or not. I think YouTube is not really, is not really set up to be a streaming platform. I mean, they're, they're obviously very good for curated, content you know stuff you can upload but mm. as far as the streaming like gaming streaming platform i feel like they are they're close but it's there's still some things that i think they need to straighten out and i've been streaming about once a week and i'm getting ready to switch it to twice a week on youtube and i haven't really noticed any dip in my regular uploads but it is impossible for me to like prove like when i see a dip in my in my uh viewership for my regular uploads i don't i i think maybe the content isn't very good <laughs> or i missed the keywords or yeah you know, i just i don't know you can get in your head about it but it doesn't seem like there's a way to like really prove it which is why there's probably a a huge divide on you know different thought processes of, of content creators some people think it help it it affects it and some people don't but i think it's impossible to to really know and i've considered going to twitch honestly because i've been mm. hearing that it does and i don't know uh, that's the thing you don't know so i'd rather just not run the risk of like i've seen it i feel it because yeah. i've uploaded videos recently i was just kind of like what like what has happened like yeah. all the views have gone so i'd just rather just not kind of risk it sure for example and even though it's kind of like my first real stream on twitch today i got the same kind of numbers because it was the diehard fans like you were saying the people sure. that were all they're always there yep. they're there for every stream those guys come over and it was like my my views were you know I don't get that many it's like four or five people like every every time I stream because I'm I'm very new at it sure you know um, but yeah so I thought well if it's really I'm not really losing a, my streaming audience by leaving YouTube now I'd rather right. do it now and go to Twitch and I feel obviously Twitch is better because you know with the emotes and obviously you, you know, subscribe functionality and everything is a lot better the rewards that you get as a streamer a lot better there so I, I think in my mind i'd rather just probably again i'll just test this for a while just sure. i will just stream on twitch and then i will just upload to youtube as i usually do and if i see it start to see my views go back up again i'll be like okay yeah. again there's no proof but i'm kind of getting the feeling mm -hmm. that you're probably damaging which is so weird because what i think super weird. like it doesn't make any sense you think okay what i'm again my mind was like well what i'm offering is my youtube audience to see me you know to see me play live, live capture yeah. content live they can be you know they might feature in the next video you know all of that great stuff but if it's damaging the channel then obviously they're just going to lose a lot of people that might come to youtube for twitch yep. i've heard a lot of other things other people saying like if you turn off the monetization on your streams it won't get promoted because obviously youtube are not right. getting ad revenue from that um there's there's so many different things yeah but, yeah it'd be I'm nice not, It'd be nice if YouTube was was to come out and clarify it. You know, it would be really nice because for me, with with a base of around twenty thousand people that are subscribed to my channel, I get a healthy number in my stream just just mm. purely based on numbers. You know, um, and so I I've never been able to stream for more than like I don't know two, three, four people. I did I did streams like two years ago on Mixer. No one showed up, <laughs> so. Yeah. To stream in front of like a consistent 40 to 60, 70, 80 people because there's so many people that get the notification mm. is like it's amazing. You know, it's, it's yeah, it, feel, it feels so really cool. good and I don't want to I don't want to take a chance and go away from that even though a lot of those people probably already have Twitch accounts. Uh, mm. Twitch has been such a such a juggernaut in streaming that I can't imagine that many people that watch streams on YouTube don't 
have some sort of Twitch account sure. or can't can't transition, but I'm just so nervous about mm. it. Like I thought Yeah, well maybe you could like you say you're thinking about doing an additional day of streaming, like maybe make that a Twitch day and the other day a YouTube and then just yeah. slowly kind of like see how how it how it how it works. Again, yeah. if you're not really if you're not sacrificing that day of streaming that everyone always knows and loves, then yeah. really they're gonna feel like I get an additional day, but all I have to do is go over to Twitch. Right. So yeah. Right. So then, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea at all. I'll I'll, I'll definitely consider that. I appreciate that. I, I didn't yeah, even think yeah. of that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was either like on or off. That was it. <laughs> yeah. You kind of drip feed these things, you know, just kind of yeah. like, maybe yeah. test it, see what test happens. Test it and, and see what happens. Um, to, to switch gears a little bit, how how is your um, how is your regular like non-gaming life and gaming life? How do those things interact? And like, how do you balance all the stuff you do for gaming and how you do and all the stuff you have to do for the regular, like the regular nine to five or whatever you have going on. Yeah, sure. So everything obviously is a bit weird at the moment because of the the virus and everything, yeah. so everything still. So I'm, I'm a freelance, my job is a freelance creative. So okay. I'm an edit, I'm an editor, like video director. So I do commercials and all, all video related stuff. Cool. Um, yeah. So at the moment it's very dry. There's not a lot of work going on because as a director, obviously you're like you're on set with a lot of people, so they're yep. pretty much non-existent anymore. As an editor, a lot of the agencies are kind of like working from home, so there's there's really not much work out there. So at the moment, and this is you know it's it's lucky in a way because I've been able to apply a lot of my time to the channel. Sure. So for me, normally before everything kind of hit, like the virus hit. I, it was very much like an evening thing or because I was freelance, my hours were all messed up. So, you know, I could be at home with no work for a few days and then I get a phone call and say, oh, you've got a job for two weeks. You know, and then it. it's kind of like, OK, then I would switch to evening mode. I'd have to do all of my you know uploading or, you know, content gathering in the evening. But now it's pretty much full time okay. other than I'm, you know, I'm living and breathing YouTube at the moment. And it's it's cool, but obviously the, you kind of have to split your brain between just normal stuff, making sure I'm around, you know, for the girlfriend, doing things, being sociable, going out, not staying indoors. Because I could quite easily just sit here all day and do my <laughs> things. I'm very like a, Me I'm too. a very tu I'm a very tunnel vision guy, you know. Like yeah. once I have a once I have a task, like I have to I have mm -hmm. to finish it, you know. So it's kind of like when I'm making a video, I go like, well, I don't really want to leave that because I'm in the I'm in the flow, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, at the moment, at the moment, it's uh, it, it's all cool. Now I'm just trying to figure out like a good kind of like a regime. So like every day, it's like okay, now I'm looking at Twitch more. So it's like okay, it's Monday tomorrow. I think that I might do actually the whole week. I might do like uh, at least a four hour stream every day, minimum four hour stream every day. And just kind of see if it grows. If people come because I'm doing, you know, a, lo a longer stream, I might right. get a new audience just from Twitch. Who knows? I'll post to YouTube, let everybody know that I'm streaming there, try to grow that. Obviously, as I'm streaming, I'm trying to gather content for YouTube and just trying to make something that I have a bit of a battle plan sure. every day to do it. But at the moment, it is kind of like I'm lucky enough that I can focus on it. And like you said, kind of see where it, go where it goes. I, yeah. I imagine, like you say, that you you got a nine to five. It's very difficult. Like you have to do stuff in the, and you have to kind of do YouTube and things in the evening. Yeah, that's where you kind of have to like, like, like shape your content to fit your schedule, right? Because yeah. I uploaded a video recently, and it took me eleven hours to make. Like I, I literally got it. up at I got up at like not there was an update. I woke up at seven a.m. to install the update. I was on it on the game at nine i had to unlock the gun which took like a few hours then i had to test the gun then i had which took hours then i had to actually get all the gameplay of me using it getting a win and stuff like that mm -hmm. took me hours and i had to edit the video yep you know so that's like you couldn't do that if you was just like working in the daytime nope you'd have to do the thing of like okay i'm gonna unlock it and then just make a cool video you know yep. it's and like by, a shorter version and by that time guess what there are you know five or ten other youtubers that have already exactly. done that and and exactly. then put the video out um i i it's it's i'm so glad that my need for speed content doesn't i'm okay well let's hold on let me back up so <laughs> so need for speed doesn't have any more updates they're done they, yep. they the last content update was in march so okay. that's how long i've been making content on a game that's literally not being touched um anyway so now fast forward to now I'm so glad that I don't have any more updates because those days where there was something new or something that the community needed to know about right now, 
uh-huh. it, it, those were such difficult days. I mean, oh, yeah. you have to, like you just said, download, play, you know, gather your thoughts and make sure that it's true to your channel because you could just throw a video together on something and it could be complete bullshit and yep. you could put it out first and be the first guy out. But if it's yep. bullshit, the people that are going to watch it are like, you're not going to get, you're not going to gain audience. So it has to be true to you. So for me, I overanalyze things. So it takes me longer. You know, mm-hmm. I, I hated those days. So in some ways it's good. I'm not, ha- I don't have to <laughs> worry about updates or new cars or anything like that. Mm. But in some ways I wish the game was being updated because it would really propel the content. Yeah. Um, it, gives you, it gives you fresh content. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like but I, have I, the, I have I, the same thing. Like I had the other day with this, 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 the new update. Yep. Okay. Like there's a, I could see people that I follow that I respect. They upload it, you know, they get videos up four hours quicker than me, yep. but that's because like they literally, they unlock the gun. They go in the game, they get a win with it, yep. and then they just post a video. Yep. And it's a lot, and they get so many views, oh, like I know. so many. I know. But I think like I, I, but I think I'm not giving you anything. Right. Anyone could do that, right? right. But yeah. that's why I spend all the time testing and stuff. And I, be- I believe, and a lot of people say this is like you will be rewarded for that someday at the end because the yeah. people that watch my videos usually. I get such good feedback, and I get so many likes and comments because they go, "Wow, man." Everyone else is not showing me this or yep. has shown me this content. Yep. So although I'm probably a bit late and I do miss out on like thousands of views, I'm probably going to get more, a lot more subscribers and people that would come back to my content. Yes. Because of that, I hope that is the. I I truly do believe in making better content rather than being fast. I think you're absolutely right, and this is a great tip for anyone just starting out: make content that is that is in line with a long-term strategy don't make content that's clickbait don't make content that's like just because you're first but it doesn't offer anything make something that is going to make the viewer happy every time don't and and i would sacrifice views for that type of content every single time because Mm. i think it it is a it is a better foundation for which you're building your channel on i mean it's just better it's better it may Completely. not. It may not get you the views. I mean, you're not going to get a hundred thousand views right away. But yeah, you're going. I get... think that's the point. I think that is the key point: is that people expect to get a lot very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that kind of drives you to make very bad videos. Do you that compare? Kind of you... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say. I think that makes you make bad videos. It make, yeah. makes you rush. It makes you put up bad content. Mm-hmm. It makes you kind of like fish for this ideal kind of like instant million view video. Yep. That you know it just won't happen when you're that small of the channel. YouTube will not pro- promote your video that well enough for you mm-hmm. to get that. So you're better off just making like incredible content, like whether it takes you twice or three times as long yep. as anybody else that's making videos people will notice and that's what will separate you from the others which later that, those those channels that were that uh you know a dime a dozen they will drop off at yep. some point they might be good now but they're just uh they've got nothing else in the bag right. you know if you're bringing up you know content that no one else is making that's the best thing you can possibly do yeah i was gonna ask you um do you ever compare yourself to other call of duty content creators and other youtube channels like whether it's intentional or unintentional do you ever kind of find yourself looking at other channels and kind of seeing like what what is that channel doing that i'm not doing or you kind of yeah, just sure have your head down and work on yours i think you have to realistically i think anyone who says it's like if they say oh my stuff is completely original i don't get any inspiration from anyone is is a liar because yeah. you're obviously watching content on youtube that's where you you know you're, you're in that space yep so there's there's, there's always people that I, I watch, I'll try and think of some names in a second, but there's always people, there was, um, there's a guy called Trap God, and I think he was one of the first, I think, he's not mass, he's not huge, but he was one of the first people that was really, he was really stats heavy, you know, he would get the guns and he would like, bring you like every single stat, and for me, I felt it was too much, sure. it was too much information, by, by the time he got to the end of the video, I'd forgotten half of the information that he told yeah. me, yep. but it gave me the idea of like, that was I think one of the times when I was like, I think I need to dig a little bit deeper and I could go even further with the stats that I bring. Again, it might take me a bit longer, but I kind of saw the, um, the how the audience reacted in the comments to his videos. 
again, because he was doing a lot more and he was working harder than a lot of other people and people were resonating off that. So I was kind of in myself saying, I don't want to go that far, right. but it inspired me to kind of try a different direction with my videos. Um, so yeah, in answer to your question, there, there are definitely people that I watch. I never really go out and go, oh, I want to copy exactly that video, but right. it's, it's very like, uh, and again, this is a design thing because you're, there's no such thing as like, you can't steal people's, you can take inspiration, right? Sure. Everyone is inspired by other people's stuff. Yep. Again, it's, it's a lie. Somebody says their thing is completely original because that's not true. You have, you're always inspired by something. So watch other people's videos and find elements that you like. Sometimes I will go out and I'll go and I'll try and just refresh my thumbnails and I'll go, okay, I'm going to look across YouTube in the Warzone space. Who is making the sickest Warzone thumbnails right now? One, ones that stand out to me and go, that is epic. I want to be able to make that thumbnail. Yep. And I'll jump into Photoshop and I'll, I'll rip that thumbnail and I'll just take the elements that I like. Oh, maybe he's put a shadow on the text that I think is cool. And I've not yep. tried that in mind. Yep. Something that I, I, I say, oh, that element that he's put in there really makes that thumbnail stand out. Right. I'll take that element and I'll put it within my own design, you know, things like that. And I'll try to do that with all different elements of video making, whether it is like the thumbnail, whether it is just like, you know, stats in the video, maybe it's an editing thing they've done, how they've actually structured the video. You know, maybe there's, you know, they've opened up with a very exciting clip and then they've done a personal intro to camera and something, you know, yeah. but I always look to other people to, for like those little things just to try and better myself all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Do you look at, do you look back and do you like look at some of your old content after you've published it? Always, always watch my videos all the time. I just, yeah, not a specific like date backwards, but yeah. I always just go through it, through some because there's some like, there's some that I made and this was a few months ago and it was like a, a gun build for a gun in Warzone called like the Bruin and like, I remember no one was using it, but I knew it was a monster and no one was using it. So again, like I made a very kind of like detailed video that wasn't too much info but it really kind of like summed summed up the weapon and i don't i don't know why but that one really worked like for me when i watch it i go like damn man that's a, that's a it's a really good video yeah. it's perfectly structured it flows nicely mm -hmm. you know when i watch it i'm entertained by it. and it's my own video i watch it and i can just sit there and watch it yep. so then i will always go back to that video as kind of like a you know like a bookmark and I yep. go like, okay, I'll, sometimes I'll watch it before I go and make a video to yep. go like, if I make it as good as that, I'm super happy, you know? Yep. And then there's other ones because there's like within vidIQ, it kind of shows you, you can go and like, um, you know, it kind of analyzes your channel and tells you like what videos are not working so well, like what's not getting the watch time or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. And I will go and look at those videos and go, okay, so what could I have done better in this video? And you watch it and yeah sometimes things jump out at you sometimes they don't sometimes you think oh it's a great video like what's wrong with that yeah. but again youtube algorithm all comes into play it, 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 it's you know there's not a concrete factor sometimes that you can no. go okay because of x why didn't happen right you know yeah but i think it's what do you do you always go back and watch your stuff your your videos yeah i do it more than i should i feel like because i'm overly critical of my own work like I could put out, well, okay, first, let's just talk about this. My, my top five videos, I'm not that proud of. And they mm. did really, really well. And I'm like, I go back and I find things that I just hate about. I'm like, oh man, this one, the frame rate on this, on the, the video, the, the, the gameplay is terrible. Like it, mm. it looks like shit, but people watch the video. There's information that's good in there, but the video quality was terrible. Or like mm. the other one, like, my my number one video, I forgot to 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 tell people this one thing that was like, in order to unlock these parts, you have to be level fifty. I forgot that whole thing, and it's like a huge that's the part. Key pack, it's the pack key. Pack yeah, yeah. And the video went off, right? And so I'm just like, damn. So yes, I watch. I go back and watch my content all the time, and it really frustrates me to do so. But it also pushes me to make better content going forward so like yeah. when i make a video in this case i do like um car builds so it's similar to the gun builds right you're yeah you're analyzing how the car the best components exactly to, yeah make the best car yeah and so when i'm going to make a, a a car build video i go back and look at the previous one and i go okay what 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 formula did i use here did it work yep it worked okay i'm going to use that again but mm -hmm. just make it uh you know relevant to that car 
And then I try to add something a little bit better, like throw another little nugget Perfect. of information yeah. in there to make it just a little better. And I feel like if I keep doing that, the videos will just get a little better and a little better and a little better. And then all of a sudden you've got something that is really, really good. And it's a, win it's a winning piece of content that I can use going forward. The structure That's of it, good. I mean. That's you so know? good. Yeah, so, of course. Because what you're doing is you're pushing your foundation line. Yes. Your minimum, your minimum yep. is always rising, yep. you know, always. And obviously that can that can spiral out of control, but even you're just by if just tiny increments, like yep. uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's a really good piece of, of uh, advice. Yeah, sure. there's it, I'm working on a video. The video I was working on today actually is um is a retest of a car that I did way back in early the early days of Need for Speed. Mm. This particular car is regarded by a lot as being one of the fastest cars in the game. But when I did the video early on. I sort of misrepresented it as being not that fast. And I think because I had sort of an opposition to the other content that was out there, I think it got a lot of views because of that. And so mm. I'm actually going to be releasing a video that is like basically saying I was wrong. Mm. You know, I, I'm going back to that video and I'm saying this is what I said earlier. I've since have more experience in the game. I'm a better driver now than I was then. And... Yep. The information that I have now is different, and I'm willing to say that I'm wrong on a video that did well, you know? And yeah. well, I think that's the most important part because you're just human, right? Yeah. I, you make, I, make mistakes. It's no problem. People are not willing these days to admit when they're wrong. You know, they're very, like, married to their ideas. And I, I, don't, sure. I don't feel like I am. I'm, I try to be as objective as possible. And if new information comes to light, I'll change my mind. You know, yeah, and, I, and I don't let you guys know, hey, I was wrong on this. And yeah, um, but anyway. I think that's what the people will uh, resonate to that yeah. because that it's honest, it's, it's, it's more human, it's honest. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like, again, it's that's one of the kind of like the key things that I hate is like, well, there's people lying to you and like, like painting this kind of dream world where everyone's instantly correct and like, yeah, everything's the best. Like, immediately, it's not, it's not true. You know, mm -hmm. I had that with a video. <laughs> um there was like guns that were being released and i think it's when like uh, modern warfare was first released and you have like the gunsmith right where you can actually just like yeah you can make these guns into anything they might have conversion kits and make them from like assault rifles into like smgs or whatever you know so the sky's the limit you know right. go crazy build stuff right. so i was building real world guns because obviously there's secret guns in the game that if you put the right attachments on them it turns them into these other guns that are in real life and there was a massive YouTuber called Drifter, and he'd done a video, and he was like, oh, you can make this gun out of it. And I was like, oh, no one's done that. So I'm going to copy him, and I'm going like, to make that gun. He was wrong. Oh, he no. done it wrong. <laughs> so basically what I did was like, I was like, oh, not only have I like, I've sold out, and I've actually copied this guy, yep. and I've done this video. This was like one of my first videos that I'd done. I was like, now I'm also wrong. <laughs> so i like loads of people going like that's not the right gun man that's not that's not true yeah. so what i did is instantly and this was like i finished that video at like you know midnight and i was going to bed and then i saw the comments coming in and i was like oh man i'm gonna have to fix this yeah. so i basically had to go back in the video and just change all the terminology actually like call it its real gun and then make another separate video but on the new video where i come out and i said oh, sorry guys i i was completely wrong in that video i wasn't it wasn't right of me to say that you know yep. this is the actual true thing i've got so many comments saying like i watched the other video man like props to you for coming out and like fixing that and being honest like no one does that you know yep, nobody does it i had a very other you know a perfect experience of that exact same it's that exact same thing and it's always yeah. right just to come out and another thing is like what as I've been starting out and trying this new thing of testing guns and doing all of the stats, that's a completely new learning curve for me because right. you have to learn how to do like time to kill calculations and like bullet distance and, you know, bullets have hit scans. So the first bullet doesn't count as a, you know, and you have to do all these calculations. So when I actually find something that's quite revolutionary and I'm like, this actually disproves like a lot of what other people have been saying, mm -hmm. part of me says, uh, I think you could be wrong there, buddy. Like, yeah. Maybe you haven't done the calculations <laughs> right. And then lo and behold, about a month later, all the pros go, oh, that gun is sick. Like, this gun is crazy. Like, it outbeats everything. And I was like, damn it. I was right. I should have trusted myself. <laughs> yep. I should have just gone with it. Yep. So, yep. so yeah. Um, that's funny. What, what, a, what a weird challenge that we have to, like, you're almost like, you're almost like trying to vouch for yourself. Like, you put the video on, it's like, these are my thoughts. But then you're like, yeah, man. 
maybe they're my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of the things I've learned is just just go with it. And like yeah. you say, don't be ashamed of making mistakes. Like if you right. do make a mistake, make another video and just say, yep. oh, I was wrong. Just have yep. fun with it. Because the more you're worried about it and like, oh, if I say this and if I say that, it's like, screw it, man. Like, don't be rude or whatever. But just, you know, just say your say your piece. Yep. Say what you feel. That's the, uh, it is your channel. Like, it is yep. yours. Don't let other people dictate like what it should be. Right. It is yours at the end of the day. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, hold on, oh. let me see. I have, I had a couple of things. I want. Oh, that's right. Social media. All right. I want to talk about social media because <laughs> right. I personally, I am, I'm a little tired of Instagram personally. And yep. uh, I don't feel like it's going anywhere. I feel like the majority of people are moving to other platforms. TikTok's where it's at, apparently. It is, apparently. But then I have this, mm. well, my, <laughs> my government is not so happy with TikTok, but that's a oh. whole nother topic. Um, but TikTok is where it's at, apparently. Uh, do you use social media, number one? And how do you use it to bring people to your YouTube content? I'm terrible at it, if I'm completely honest. So this is one of the things was like, just in general, I'm not really like a massive social media guy. Like I don't, I don't really like it. I don't feel the world should know. Maybe because I'm a, I'm quite an introverted person. Like I don't really want to tell tell the world about what I'm having for dinner, and I don't, sure. I don't think they care. You know, right, right. So I always had that kind of like prerequisite in my head, like to be like that. So I didn't really care too much about social media. But then I kind of learned like how much you can actually do for your channel. And so even Shroud like has come out and said like one of the big things that he overlooked was social media. And as soon as he done it, it was such a massive like driving force to bring people to his channel. Yeah. So I'm very much part of this mix that I was saying to you like daily. I'm trying to separate my time between uploads and streaming and yep. all this kind of stuff. Um, a guy on my stream, um, like a re uh, regular called Don on my streams and on my channel, he asked me, he goes like, oh, you uploading stuff to TikTok and things. As soon as he reminded me, I was like, yeah, I haven't done that in a while, actually. <laughs> right. Because again, you have to find the clips, edit the clips, yep. make them like one by one for Instagram, you know, like the, uh, the aspect ratio and stuff. Like it's a whole, another, that's another hour, hour's worth of work, you yep. know? So I am trying to do a lot more of it. Um, I have uh, the same um, creative friend that I had the other channel with. He has gone through a very similar journey as me with uh, trying to understand how YouTube works. Um, as a creative, he's trying to promote himself on Instagram, all of his designs and all that kind of stuff. So he's having a very interesting time learning how the back end of Instagram works, like how you can get big on Instagram. Right. So he was teaching me about that. But then if you go on Twitter, it's like, oh, okay, how does Twitter work? What's the kind of driving force behind that? Yep. And then you go on TikTok. So it's a, there's so many different, like, there's not like kind of like one hat fits all, you know, it's right. kind of like you have to learn how all of these different things work. So the answer to your question is that I'm trying very hard to, 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 to do it. I don't know how well it does because I don't have much experience with it, but all I've heard is great things about how much it can do for your channel again, but you have to kind of think about where well, if I'm posting to TikTok, are they funny? Are they informative? Is it entertaining? I mean, they're very short videos, so it has to be kind of like, for me, it would have to be super hard hitting, like clutch gameplay of me taking out two squads or something really like cool, you know? Yeah. Or something very funny. I've heard like funny videos work, but obviously that doesn't fit with my my aesthetic. Right. So that... Yeah. It's How about you? Have you, do, you, do, you, do you use it or? Yeah, I use it, but I feel like, I feel like when I go to create that piece of content, specifically for Instagram or TikTok, and I, I don't use Twitter very much, but those two platforms, when I create something specifically for those two, it feels like that time would be better spent putting that uh, effort into a YouTube uh, video. Like, I, it, it, mm. it just feels wrong to me, even though I know what it can do. I mean, I, I, there's lots of examples of how social media has affected people's channels. To me, it just feels like a waste of time because I'll spend yeah. an hour you know, looking for a clip within a certain stream or looking for something and then, you know, editing and putting the captions and like trying to make it fit the, the, the Instagram model. And then I put it up and it gets like 150 views. And I'm like, I could use that hour and a half to make something on YouTube that would have done way better, you know, would have been way more exposure. But I know that it works. I know that it, it can work. I just don't spend enough time doing it. Like, sure, I feel like we're, yeah. we're kind of in the same, we're kind of in the same boat with that. Like I, I should be doing it more, but I just 
I don't know. I, I find myself like either it's laziness or it's, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think it's a routine thing. Honestly, I think with me, it's, it's a routine. As I say, I don't, I don't generally have a daily routine of it outside of, you know, trying to do it for my YouTube. Sure. So I feel that like the, the times that I have done it in a few weeks is like, it would be like, I will literally take my laptop and my hard drive to bed and I will cut something and I will just post it on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Yeah. And it will just be a very much, I, oh, I remember I got that sick clip today. So I'll put it on my hard drive and then I'll do it like the last thing I do before I go to sleep, you know? Yeah. But I feel like if I did that and I say, okay, every other day when I go to bed, I will do that there and I will find something and I'll put it on then that kind of gets you in the habit. And then for your making content, obviously at the moment, as I say you're in a very similar position to me, it's the same as like when you're starting YouTube or starting whatever. If you're not doing anything, yep. nothing's going to happen. Yep. So you have to like push and push and push and push and don't don't look for the success. I imagine that's what the, the, the thing that's in my head all the time is that same saying. Like I say to myself, don't expect anything right now. Just keep putting it out there, putting it out there, putting it out there. But again, I just I'm just struggling to fit it within my my regime. I have time. I have time where I'm just not doing anything and I'm just you know, messing around. But so I probably should concentrate on doing that stuff a bit more. Yeah, me too. Uh, how do you make that work? And we talked about the virus a little bit. How do you make that work um, in terms of your like your your bills? If we don't, I'm sorry if I get a little too personal, but like, is it is it affecting your ability to like? pay rent and and be able to live where you are or do you have roommates or how to, how is the virus really affecting that because it, it's obviously giving you more time to create content but mm. i can imagine it being a real struggle for a lot of people and yeah i don't know is it I, is it is it affecting i'm you? I, i'm i'm quite i'm very lucky in the fact that um i kind of I, i've kind of paid i paid my i sold i was living in i bought a house before with my okay. girlfriend and it was outside of london so we had it was a it was like a, a bigger house and we was like we don't need all of this we don't need all this stuff uh it was kind of like in like suburbia okay. so like we're obviously still relatively young i mean i'm in my 30s my girlfriend's like late 20s we was like not doing anything we was commuting into london which took us like three hours of our life every day to go to work wow we're like we're too long for this we need to like live our lives we've never lived in london so we sold up and we moved to london and i've paid the rent for the house or the flat that we live in in london for the year oh, wow. so i'm i'm yeah so I'm, I'm lucky enough that until december i don't have to worry about rent so that's, that's the awesome. only reason i think why well, my girlfriend even lets me do this <laughs> is because because i've already paid the rent now she's amazing she's, how, she's, how long she's, have you been with she's her? super supportive uh we've been together she's probably gonna kill me i think eight eight years wow like eight years together wow. so yeah and not, so not married or anything like that right not yet no not yet no no so that's hilarious because I've been I was with my uh, my girlfriend for for fourteen years before we got married. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm, I think I'm on a very similar path, man. That's insane. So yeah, no. I'm going to use you as a reference. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You got. <laughs> yeah, it's working so out it took for Malaysia us. Fourteen years. Yeah, it's exactly it's right. It's all good. It's uh, exactly um, so right. No, she, but no, she she is amazing. She's super supportive. Um, she loves the her thing is that she loves watching me play either play zombies, Call of Duty zombies, or she loves me playing like RPG games. Okay. So like Ghost of Tsushima, she loves um, The Witcher Three. Yep. Loves it. She would like, often ask me, "Is like, oh, when are we going to play that again?" You know, uh, <laughs> Zelda she loves watching me play Zelda. Does she play? Um, she doesn't. She does play occasionally. Okay. But she would rather watch me play. Okay. She's because she she doesn't like know how to play. So I think she's she's not got over the hurdle of like oh I actually need to physically like learn it. Yeah. You know. So she's she's a very much especially the way games are these days. You know, they're, right. they're they're beautiful and like cinematic and it's like what you know playing a movie, right? Yeah. So so yeah, she's more than happy enough to like I I will play it and she will just like watch and tell me like yeah. she loves telling me where loot is. You know, she's like, oh, you missed the mushroom. <laughs> you missed something, like, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, well, good good spot. That was yeah. really good. I never saw that. <laughs> right. Um, so she's like, she's my uh, second pair of eyes, and That's she's awesome. also very good for zombies because she takes down notes when we try and do Easter eggs and stuff. Oh, nice. So she's like chief note taker. So yeah, yeah she's really good at that kind of stuff, <laughs> and she likes it. That's awesome. Um, so I'm very I'm sorry, very grateful, yeah, to have her and to be in this uh, situation. Yeah. But I'm, I imagine like it's if you're if you're yeah looking to youtube to pay the bills like at this level it doesn't doesn't happen so yeah. i imagine a lot of people are not um yeah are in, a, in a bit of a worse place and need to pay bills and stuff yeah luckily for me i <clears throat> i work in the cycling industry so with when this whole thing hit i thought i thought we we're gonna have bike shops closing down left and right but oh it, god yeah They're but so it went busy 
but it went the opposite. I, it yeah. exploded. It exploded. Even here in London, like I've got literally um, an Evans, which is like a mass. I don't know if you know, it's like a massive chain of bike shops. Okay. Um, the queues down the road for it's this crazy. For the bike shop because everyone's cycling. Yep. And everyone's getting punctures and you know needs needs cycling stuff. So yeah, it, it exploded for us, and I I work Business in sales. Is booming. Oh, it's insane, and so <laughs> it feels it's it's a little bit bittersweet, right? Because a lot of people are like, "Oh man, twenty twenty is the worst year. It's the worst mm. year with all the the virus and the and and the for us the election's a huge thing. I'm sure I'm sure it gets talked about internationally as yeah. well. But but for us, it's like we're so divided, and we have the the virus as well, and so there's a lot of like turmoil. But for me mm. personally. I'm like, man, 2020 has been great. I, like, I've sold more product, bike product, than I've ever sold in my entire life, and That's the so cool. and the YouTube channel went from like basically I, I was I was sitting at like a thousand subscribers in November of last year, and it just wow. over the six months it just exploded. So I'm like, well, that's massive. That's crazy. I don't even know what's happening. You know, I, I just for me, it's such it's so bittersweet. It's so bittersweet. It's, it's weird. Uh, yeah, it's weird because I, I, I know a few people that go like, oh, you know, you, you say you ask, ask the uh, same question. You say like, oh, how's work? You know, is it bad for you? They're like, no, fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. Uh, my my girlfriend, she got a um, she's freelance as well, and she got a a year's contract at an agency wow. the week before the lockdown happened. Wow. And they're all working from home. So yeah, wow. super lucky. So she's just here at home. She works very busy. She's super busy, but um, yeah. That's very, incredible. Like, very lucky. Yeah. I, I'm I'm so happy that you have a supportive uh, spouse because it, it's it makes a huge difference. Like for me, this is like this was like a a, a dream. Like I, I recognized a few years ago that I didn't want to work a nine to five for the rest of my life. Right. I, I just want to be able to create content and work in gaming because I love gaming. I've been gaming since I was I think four or something. I mean, like. Mm. It's it's a huge part of my life. It was always like mm. this escape for me, right? I could get away from regular life, go play games, and it was it was bliss, right? But mm. so so a few years ago, I, re I realized that I don't want to do nine to five for the rest of my life. I don't want to be that guy. Mm. So I started creating content, and at that time, we were we were girlfriend, boyfriend, and girlfriend, and she was like, "Go for it, like just do it." You know, she was very yeah. very supportive, and it it meant the world of difference. It was like. I don't think it could happen without her supporting me. And she does, she actually does like all of my graphics, like all my thumbnails, all of my, like wow, she's so very cool. involved, you know? So I, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's nice that, to hear that you've got, you've got a supportive uh, spouse. That's super as well. cool. Uh, so it's like, I think that's a kind of definitive moment in a relationship when it's Definitely. kind of like, because yeah, obviously there's a million different relationships and people have their, you know, problems. But I think, you know, when you found someone great, when they just yeah. accept who you are. Yep. And I think that was a massive problem with me. And that's one of the reasons why I stopped the, the old channel like years ago when we got to like 8,000 subs. Because mm -hmm. I, I had my, I've got a son. I had him when I was 19. So I was very young. And at that time, that was the time when I had the channel. And I was having to make very ton of like tough decisions then. And when, uh, you're, uh, when I was a kid, right, being a, like a paid gamer wasn't a thing. Right. It didn't exist, right? right? It didn't exist. So we didn't grow up with the culture of like, oh, you could play video games for a living. Right. And that's when like YouTube was kind of young because we were signed to Machinima. I don't know if you remember Machinima, but they was like a gaming network channel. People okay. who watch this might know it, but like it was back in the day. And that's when like the YouTubers that were blowing up were getting signed to it. And we just got signed to it. And it all kind of like fell through for some reason. I can't remember the reason, but it was kind of like, I had to make a decision where it's like, well, I need to either become a stereo like a stereotypical good parent, or I need to like continue this dream of being a YouTuber. And back then, it wasn't like it was now. It wasn't like, oh, you could get paid like millions of dollars or pounds right. or whatever to, to 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 do this. Right. But now, part of the um, the reason why I'm doing this is like she has helped me so much to be like, you don't have to fall into this stereotype of like not like not being who you are. Right. If that's something you wanted to do and you've always been good at it and you've always wanted to, you know, you've loved doing it, then do it. Do like it. now you've got an opportunity. Like say, like you, you know, you're not working for whatever reason. You've got the time. You've got the you've got the skills. You have the applications. Like just do it. And it's yeah. been so refreshing for like for her to a to actually support me to do that, but also to be like it's making me so fulfilled because I don't think I have to like hide from being a youtuber you know right. it's kind of like i could be proud and be like yeah i've got a kid yeah i'm 30 years old i don't care i'm gonna make like 
yeah. YouTube content. I'm going to show right. all these fools how to make cool content. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll like, just be proud about it and like yeah. do it. It's been so, so, so cool. How old's your kid? So he's, he's 13 now. Okay. So he's 14. So he's wow. uh, huge. And now he's, <laughs> he's super into games and like, he tells me how like rubbish I am at every game. <laughs> he, he kicks my ass at Smash Brothers. Like he's really good at Smash Brothers. He's really? like pro level Smash Brothers. Wow. Yeah. He's really, really good. That's insane. Yeah. Do you, um, yeah. do you ever consider like, like helping him create content because he's so good that like, would it work yeah. that way or? I do, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't want, he's not interested. Got it. So like, he's got his own thing, but uh, I've, cause literally I like the, the, like the bed, that's his bed like behind. So we kind of share cause he doesn't live with me. So we kind of share office slash bed. So when got he's it. here, he sleeps here and he has all of like, if you could see like from my angle, like the setup got the PC, like double monitors, like, you know, full like gaming setup, like yep. costs like thousands of dollars, you know, yep. not interested zero interest wow. sits there on his switch plays like uh, jrpgs and like play smash <laughs> brothers and stuff That's... and i feel this like i've obviously like encouraged him and i've said sure. like, okay if you wanted to do this i'll look at you know what kind of videos do you watch do you want to kind of make some but he's not interested so it's kind of like i feel with children it's kind of like you have to kind of show them the path yeah you know and if they want to walk along it then you support them but don't try to force them to do it you know yeah i think that's... sometimes they need a little bit of a nudge because yeah. they're lazy yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> right exactly no that's yeah. that's that's a great strategy like just just kind of show them the options and then with the one that they pick then you can kind of help them down that road and if they yeah. decide for whatever reason to jump off of that road and go to the next one that you just help them with that as well i mean i don't yeah uh, listen i don't have any kids um but i have lots of nieces a lot of like younger little ones around and mm. uh, at some point i think the oldest one is like six at some point they're gonna be at a at a they're gonna find something they love to do and i and i hope to be a, a positive influence on them because i feel like i went down the road of being this like nine to five have a career type of guy and i feel yeah, like me too man yeah. i kind of chase the the idea of making more money and buying a house and doing all of these things and exactly the same as me yeah i i don't regret a lot of things but i do regret not exploring games earlier you know i feel like i could have yeah. i could have done this i could have started this a little earlier um but anyway it is what it is i mean i'm at i'm where i'm at now and we'll just keep going but i hope to be able to yeah. be that influence for those little ones later on and that's sure. awesome that you do that for your for your kid. It's awesome. Yeah, I've got a friend of mine as well, and he's like he's he's, he's I think he's like mid mid thirties, and like he's got two. He's just literally had another baby, and he was saying to me he like on our old channel he done like one series of like The Last of Us like a playthrough, sure. and he's got like a beauty like he's got a voice for radio, you know, like he's got a perfect like he's got a very intelligent guy. He's very like um he's quite funny with what he says. I said, like, dude, I said, you're like, you're perfect for this, man. I was like, you got you got to do it. Just get a capture card. And he plays games. He loves indie games. Oh, so okay. I said, oh, man, you've got like a niche. Like, yep, do it. And yep. he, like, he finally is like, you know what, man? After you've seen your channel, he's like, I'm, I'm going to do it. And he's got, you know, he's got two kids. He's got no time. But he's like, he does these reviews. And now he's getting some attention. He's like, I'm so happy awesome. that I did it. And again, because he kind of like fell into this idea that he's like, oh, that's not who I can't be like that because I am this yeah. person. I'm a father. Or yep. whatever and like what you're saying with the house that was the that was the dream that i was sold by like my parents and my peers when i was younger yep. it's like oh you need you need to work nine to five and get a good job and buy a big house and that's that's success yep and i had it like when i was like 30 and i was like doesn't mean anything to me right it's boring like i don't yep. want it like i'd rather live in like a <laughs> one bedroom shack it somewhere that's like exciting you know yeah and that's the thing it's kind of like again when i was younger with the the, the old channel it was kind of like that you, you can't do that that isn't a career you can't be a gamer that's not a that's not a you know sustainable thing and right. obviously even now it probably isn't a very like that like, few people can make it right but it's still something that you shouldn't not pursue you know right right yeah there's a lot of opportunity in the gaming in the gaming world i mean anyone can upload a video onto youtube for the most part and if you stick with that long enough You'll find a niche. You will, and you'll find your you'll find your voice. And if you're doing it consistently enough, all of your content in the in the beginning is going to be absolute shit. Yeah. But eventually, you'll get to a point where like you touch on something just a little bit, and you'll and you'll recognize it. But I feel like yep. people want things instant nowadays. Yeah. They want that instant 
success and and i don't think that happens in content no. creation i mean not really unless you're like really lucky it never or... happens it never happens it never happens you can't instantly be be good at like amazing at something right you know like it's but, but that's the thing it's obviously how it's portrayed and you can't see these like million plus sub channels every video explaining how they're so good it's just obviously they make videos all the time right and that's it but obviously people watching that go like oh i want to make a video and they make a video and it doesn't look like you know, right. you know choose your biggest like youtube celebrity but like it doesn't look like that so instantly they get depressed and then they they stop doing it because yep. it isn't what they thought it was yep. how long but have the, you been the, making content uh man yes like i say if i take the other channel that was like five just just like pure back-to-back -back making content i think like 10 years wow. more probably more probably more yeah. but again i'm always i'm making video my vi making videos is my job for for sure obviously it's not the same for gaming but you know making commercials making stuff that sells like that's that's my my bread and butter you know yeah. as we say yeah so um i so I, yeah years 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 yeah i i wish i was i wish i started sooner i bounced around so much like started about four years ago i started just mm. like trying to figure out what i was doing i had a blog i did i was heavy on instagram and then i was i tried to stream and it, that worked out terribly and then i finally kind of realized that youtube was the the path but i had to teach myself everything like from day one i, I didn't know how to use adobe premiere i didn't know i didn't know how to use i didn't know how to capture my game footage i didn't know i just knew that i liked doing it like i liked yeah. trying to figure it out yeah so it was a it was kind of a sign but but yeah years man it takes it takes years to get to a point where you're making something that is of even just the basic level of of quality for for youtube yeah of course that's the thing it's a, it's a skill and it takes yeah. it takes years it there, there is no secret to it mm -hmm. it's just years and years and years and years like Not i said all. before i've made a lot of shit man a lot <laughs> a lot really bad stuff like and that's just how you that's how you learn and you yeah. do it like every time you make a bad video there might be something a new skill or something you've learned in there you know yeah exactly but, um yeah i think it's if you have the interest in it and it's like what what you find it exciting to do mm. That's that's the thing because I remember like sitting there. It's, okay, probably the gaming part of it was secondary in the you know in the very beginning. Like I said, the the thing for me was like I wanted to do cool motion graphics. Sure. Know? And that was like I was yeah, and that was the kind of like uh, the canvas yeah. for it. You know, was was gaming. Yeah. And it kind of took it kind of took off from there. But it's like I said before, if like if anyone's watching this and like wants to start their channel, it is just look around at people like and kind of take influence, but don't think you're going to be like them instantly mm -mm. just use little bits of you know things you like from their channel and then just try and do your own thing and just expect to completely suck and it's completely fine to suck it is yeah absolutely is um where yeah. do you looking towards the future where do you think you're going to be in let's say five years i know that's a long time but let's let's just let's in, speculate just, in, just, in, just on youtube yeah where's on your YouTube channel? where's your channel going to be in five years I don't know, man. Like with the the way it's growing at the moment, I think it, I'd not, numbers wise, I don't know. I just thought into my head was like when you ask that question, it's kind of like you probably want a figure, right? Of like how 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 do I how do I see the channel? But I I don't know, man. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing, to be honest. Yeah. And part, uh, part of that advice is like I, I'm not gonna I don't want to set numbers. I don't want to you know trying to yeah. aspire to hit this kind of thing. Um, I don't know, but the thing is like what you were saying about like when you when you stream and you have like you know 50 people watching you and you have that community of people. And one of the biggest surprises that I've had recently was just how freaking amazing like the community is. And that's mm -hmm. what I was saying to you. Like, even the, the YouTuber community is like we all help each other if there's any yep. information that we need, like oh, how do you set up you know your OBS settings or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm always talking to the dudes and being like, you know, like transferring information and then to like subscribers like as i say i always have a dedicated four or five like there's a guy called po i do some shout outs polish antian don yep. there's all these guys that like come to my channel and it's just so great to have those people and i imagine if i had like 50 or 100 that'd be great because i just love talking to these people and right. just like having these like you know friends and family whatever you want to call them but people are just there all the time yep. and that is really just what drives me you know and the more and more that that gets bigger, that that's just like super exciting to me. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, not about money. I don't care about the money side of it. It's not really what I entered it for. Of course, if that happens, it's great. True. But 
it's it would just be cool to have success you know get some sponsors maybe trying to do some different content as i say like at the moment i'm playing pop songs off the radio i would like to do some more of my jazz covers you know sure. like just start throwing <laughs> some more like just more out there videos yeah like, like go, but go back to my roots maybe look at my old channel and go okay i love doing those you know quick scoping sniper montages no one's done that in warzone but no one's looking for it but right. maybe once I get a bit bigger, I can start bringing some of that stuff back that I did well back in the day, you yeah. know, making yeah. it more fun and more me, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that's where I, that's that's kind of where I want to see it is moving more towards, you know, playing my own songs and less about doing stuff that just ticks boxes, you know? Yes, I agree. And you can only do that by growing your audience. So oh, for until sure. that time, I've got to kind of, yeah, just follow, follow the stream. You know? Follow it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. How about, you... how about you? Well, like what, where do you see, where do you see, is it need for speed all the way or? No, I don't think so. I mean, let's be honest. Okay. I like, I like racing games. So I'll, I'll be playing racing games as they come out. You know, I think need for speed is, is a, is a dying game. So I don't think I'll be making need for speed heat content in a year mm. from now. I think it'll be something else, but it, it's definitely going to, I definitely want to still make racing content in five years. God, I would love, I don't care what the numbers are, but I would love to be able to quit my day job and do this full time. That's that's yeah. my ultimate goal. So I think in five years, I, I hope that I'm there. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you just, it's so impossible to tell. I mean, at the level I'm at now, I'm not making enough to pay the bills. I make a little every month, but it's not enough. You know, it needs to be yeah. like, 10 times what I'm doing now to pay yeah, the bills. Of course. of course, I've gotten myself into these uh, deeper holes, though, with the house and a car. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little responsibilities that have to be paid for. So I'm, it's a little bit harder than if I was, like, say, 25 and I lived in a small apartment somewhere and I could just, like, scrape by on, you know, ramen noodles or something like exactly that. Exactly, every day. Yeah. But. So it's a little different, but um, but yeah, in five years, I I hope to be full time. I hope to be doing this. This is something I love to do. I just want to keep doing it. I want to do it sure. all the time. Like I can't even turn my brain off when I'm at work. Like thinking about, I'm like I'm thinking about like okay, what's that next video? What uh, yeah? What what clip do I need to get? What you know? I'm always thinking about it, and so I I want to. I want it to be the thing that I'm doing all day. I mean, really. Yeah, do. well, man, I think you're on a pretty amazing path. Like, as you say, over the Thank last you. few months, you've blown up from like, you know, yeah. up to the tw like 20K plus that you have now, right? Yep. I mean, man, like, imagine a year from now. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, dude. Yeah, if I've noticed from like the hardest thing was from like, I, I remember from around 200 subs. Yeah. I was the hardest time. Like, I saw no movement like at all. I got to 100 and I was like, okay, cool. This is getting great. For some reason, around 200, I was like, and it didn't move yeah. for ages, and it slowly, yeah. slowly built up. And then I think from about 500 subs, it really started to, to grow. I think yeah. I had that, that hit video come out, and then I started building upon that, you know. But then from 1,000, it's just like, whoop, like it's 50 a day, 60 yep. a day. Like yep. it's just, snow, it's a snowball effect. Yes, you know? it is. So I imagine like if you, if I, I'm, I hope that's applying to your channel because, I mean, if you're going, you've got, what is doing the math off the top of my head you know it's like 15k in like a few months right yeah it went Time from 10 10 you know like jesus man that's 100k subs that's yeah a... i made content for a whole year with like 100 subs mm. and it, it was just nothing exactly like you were saying there's nothing 100 200 it was just creeping like maybe four or five subs a day i was yeah. i was pumped i'm like i got 10 subs today yes yeah. you know and then i hit a thousand and it feels like youtube just kind of like I don't know. It just like you, you've got the checkbox checked now, and it's, you can you, feel it, right? Yeah, I, I felt yeah. It. I, I was saying to my girlfriend, I was looking at my my stats on my phone on the, the yep. on the creator thing, right? And I said, like, it's gone. Like, I woke up one morning, I was like, this has gone crazy. I'm like, I'm getting so many subs, and it was like I had a thousand and ten subscribers. I was like, I could feel it as soon yes. as I hit a thousand subscribers. YouTube put me in that extra gear, you yep. know, and it's like, yep, yep. you you've achieved this secret level yep. and now you've got an extra life here you go buddy <laughs> it is it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's so much like that like and then on top of that i had a couple of videos like right after i hit a thousand that were extremely popular like i don't know what happened i i did the right research or the content what for whatever reason they popped off and that exploded everything i went from a thousand to like four thousand within a month and then mm. from there it was like every single day 80 to 
120 subs every day. And it's been like yeah. that for months. So I don't, I just keep trying to put out good content. That's, I try not to look at that number, but it's really hard. Every time I open my phone, I'm like, let me check the number. You know, it gives me that, yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's, I, I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but it gives me that little bit of like, that little good feeling in the morning. Oh, another, 40, yeah, 50 subs, it's yeah. like an easy win, isn't it? It's good it for is, your life. It is. Well, the, it is. The chemicals in your brain to go, yes, like yep. positive thing, which is, is nice, which is, is always, always, always good. But the thing is with subs, it's kind of like, as you said, I think you said before, is like people kind of judge you by, like, they see your channel as like, oh, you're, you're a success. Yeah. And like you say, it's like, well, I'm not really. There's plenty of people that are bigger than mm -hmm. me, right? But because it's like people know how hard it is to get like a thousand subs. And I felt the difference is kind of like when you hit 1K, obviously people see you differently. It's like, I do. Okay, this guy means business. Like he's not like an, an under one thousand sub channel. You it's know? almost it's almost like I a mean, test. Twenty he's in twenty k. You know he's he's doing it. You're you're cementing yourself. Yeah. In the, in the industry, you know, that's, so to speak. And that's so, that's like, the hope. Kind of, I don't I don't find that subs really affect my views. No. Because I know from this hit video that I've got got it's got like it gave me a third of my subscribers. Yeah. And I know yeah. that like they don't watch my other content because it's right. kind of different. It's not, you know, this was kind of like a help, help how to on video. Yeah. And the other ones are more like gameplay, like uh, weapon builds. And I don't, yep. they didn't come for that. So I know they don't watch it, which is really like that video that I made that was so successful was probably like, you know, 10% of the content I make. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, so they don't watch that, the, my regular content. So I don't see, you know, I think I've got 700 subs from that video. So it's like, that, I don't see 700 views instantly because right. those people watched it. Right. It's, I, you know, if you you look on your um your analytics, right, where it says like how many pe uh, people who are like subscribed or not subscribed watch your content, right? Yep. And mine is like ninety six percent are un like not, um, subscribed. not subscribed. Yep. So I was like, well, what do they do, man? Like, obviously, <laughs> and I think then I think to myself, I was like, well, how of, out of all the people that I'm subscribed to on my personal like YouTube and my no fake YouTube, how many of them do I go back and watch? Right. And it's probably like two percent of the channels that I'm subscribed to. I don't religiously go through every channel I've subscribed to and watch their new videos. Nope. It's very, very few. I might just like like someone's video, then I think, oh, it's worth a sub. Yep. And I might never watch it again. So I think, oh, okay, those people are pretty much doing the same thing yep. to my channel. So what can you do? What you said, just keep putting out good content mm -hmm. and then you get those people that keep wanting to come back. But it's, it's interesting because it, it elongates the whole process. If we go back to the band analogy, makes everything longer. We have to play the hits. For yep. a lot longer because <laughs> the yeah. numbers need to be bigger in order yeah. to actually get the views. Like yep. for me, you you would think if I've talked to my old self when I was back at a thousand subs and I thought if I was looking at future self with 20,000 subs, I would think every video I put out would get 5k views right away. I, I that's yep. that seems reasonable. 25% of my subs watch the video right away. Yep. Nope. No, most of nope most of my videos within a two day time are like around 1500 to a, to 2000 views that's mm. only 10 percent of my subs in two days are that are watching yeah. it and then i go back to the analytics exactly what you're saying about 90 percent of my views come from youtube search they don't they're non non-subscriber people they're people that just have never seen my content before finding it for the first time it's really interesting. And that's that's what a channel with 20,000 subs, I can't imagine what it's going to be down the road when it's, you know, 100,000 subs or 200,000 subs. How many of those people are actually watching the content? Or is it YouTube pushing the content because you have this sort of authority within the within the algorithm? I don't know. I've, I've heard it is that. I think it's kind of like when you hit, like I said, this 1,000 is definitely, it's a stream and they put you in this new category and you get promoted in a different way. I, I think it's when you hit like kind of like 5k subs and it puts you in a different one. But that's the thing. It's kind of like when when I'm looking into the algorithm for live streaming, again, it's kind of like I'm getting lots of my subscribers going. I didn't even get the notification for that. Yep. And these are people that are honestly saying to me, like, I get your all of your notifications yep. and I didn't see it. I just happened to look at your channel whilst I was on YouTube and I saw that yep. you were live. Yep. And they're people that subscribe. So I hate to see what was happening to people like you know what youtube doing is just to pump my content out to unsubbed people yep you know so it's a, it's a minefield i don't think we'll ever kind of get to the bottom of it no. but um yeah subs don't mean views no they definitely <laughs> don't and they, yeah. subs don't mean views they also don't mean any um like ad revenue at all i mean nope. you could have a million subs but if your videos are not getting any views you're not getting any any ad revenue so yeah 
in terms of like thinking of this as a career, for me, I want this to be a career. Um, it's really awesome that I've got 20,000 subs, but for me, the work is not done. I need to continue to put out good content because the views are what is going to uh, make the difference and, and put me into a, a career YouTuber versus a, you know, just a part-time YouTuber. So. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, in a way, it kind of makes it harder the bigger you are because it's like yeah. more of a challenge to drive those people to to just sub and well to keep watching all of your content and i think that is part of the i don't know what i think the algorithm has changed but the part of the algorithm was is like they view your metrics on people that have come to your channel subscribe and then watch more of your content yes the, that that says to youtube you're doing very well and that is the content and that all kind of stems back to what you know we were both saying is like just make really good content that stands out and is different and that people enjoy yes uh, so people will keep coming back because you're offering something different. And I think that is something that I will possibly look into as well is like, okay, yeah, I want to kind of like go out and start playing my songs. But I think there will always be the reality of like, I will always have to cater to like, to entertaining an audience. Cause at the end of the day, that is what you're doing. And it's about, yeah. I, I don't want to, until unless you're absolutely massive and you can do whatever you want because you've got billions of subscribers yep. and viewers and, um, yeah, I think there will always be a part of like you're going to have to do something within your act to to entertain, and yes. that is the thing that's going to keep bringing people back because yeah. again, like you say, you can have your subscribers, but if you're not doing something that goes like makes them come back and go, oh, I want to check out what Militia's doing because I love that guy. Yep. You know, they're the people like I say, they they come for you. Yep. You know, yep. you could be playing anything, but they yep. come for you. You know, yeah, exactly. And that comes from your personality. So that's like I say, it's the part of the act, right? <laughs> it is. It is. Do you, um, I don't have anything more for you, but do you have anything for me? You have any questions about anything, really, before we no, wrap no, up? I think it's great. No, it's good. Yeah, great chat. Yeah, yeah, well, I, so I really appreciate it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but I really appreciate you being here. And, uh, of course, I'll, I'll give you a full, like, intro. I don't know if you caught the podcast I did with Daddy Tracks, but, um, it'll give you a, a full intro. I'll have your, your socials and all of your, um, you know, all the plugs that we need, uh, on screen the entire time. So, like oh, I said, awesome. I really appreciate you, you doing this and we're going to have to do it again. It was a good talk and I, I mean, I'm curious to check in with you in like another couple of months and see where, where the channel is and, and kind of yeah, see, man. see if you, you've, if maybe changed your mind or not changed your mind or, or if you've found new strategies that work. I'm, of I'm course. very, I'm very interested in seeing what other people are, are, are doing and how they're progressing along the, the content yeah. creation journey. So yeah, we, if you're down for it, we'll, we'll do it again in another, another couple of months and, I'm completely down for it, 100%. Yeah. I think this is really good because, again, it's like I, you go through this stuff every day, but sometimes it doesn't cement in. And just yep. just by talking about it, yeah, actually goes like, oh, actually, that's a good idea. Or actually, <laughs> I have a like, right, you know, it's really good, really good for us. But um, yeah, if you want to do it more regularly, then you know, I'm I'm more than happy awesome. to, to do it more regularly and just yeah, chat about things or. Yeah, whatever awesome. you want, really. Well, I appreciate it very much, man. I'll, I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next podcast. All right, man. All Amazing. Right. Thanks so much again. Yeah, thank right. you. Talk to you Peace. later. Bye. Bye. All right, we made it. That's the end of the podcast. Uh, make sure you guys go check out No Fate. I'll have links to all his socials and his YouTube channel in the description down below. Thanks again to you, No Fate, for coming on the podcast. Um, I know it's a lot to give up an hour or an hour and a half of your time anyway. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening, and we will catch you on the next one. Figure out.